that to me is the moment where you know social media now is chiming in and it's being shared and people are investigating what's going on here and that's the first time i mean i i thought oh man this is this this is going to go to defcon one well let's just hop into the fact that i believe everyone deserves second chances And I don't believe you ever intended to use the word where we must begin. You know, the A's have long been represented by an elephant. Glenn, we all know what the elephant in the room is. Take us back to the moment in Kansas City where you realized that you had used a word that would undo a near two-decade-long career. Yeah, it's something that I think about every day. I I wish, obviously, with all my heart that it, it, it hadn't happened. But I haven't talked a lot about kind of the nuts and bolts of what actually did happen and how how it did come out the way it did. I made a mistake and I've worn it for a long time and I'll wear it the rest of my life. I you know this, that's just reality and and I'm okay with that. It's it's among the worst verbal faux pas anyone can make. Well, I pick, I picked the worst one. Yes. And I, you d- you and here's the thing and I think it's important cuz you and I have talked about it you did it. You said it. You know you're a big boy, and that gets yep. anyone in trouble. How do you think it all happened? Because well, you clearly did not intend to say it. I will tell you how it happened. I, it was during the pregame show, and it was a, a cut-in. A cut-in is where the guys in the studio kind of check in with the announcers at the stadium. Hey, there's our two announcers, in this case, Dallas and Glenn. We do one for every show. So we're talking 150 cut-ins for 20 years, right? And when I got to the answering the question of what we had done that day, that's when I said we had an awesome day. We went to the Negro League Museum and I, I felt myself rushing. I did feel myself hurrying a little bit through that answer, but I didn't realize that it had come out the way it did. Dallas didn't hear it. No one nope. in the truck heard it. No, nope. you were not aware that you'd said it. No one. It, it literally happened without reaction. And that's not a word that usually is delivered without reaction. Yeah. So the whole thing happens. And then you're told to apologize very much after the fact. And that yeah. to me is the moment where You know, social media now is chiming in and it's being shared and people are investigating what's going on here. And that's the first time. I mean, I I thought, oh, man, this is this this is going to go to DEFCON 1. I asked Dallas about it and he said he didn't hear it. The two guys in the studio, Brody Brazil and Shooty Babbitt, I've asked them face to face. And they said at that moment, no, we did not hear it. Doesn't mean it didn't come out the way it came out. So we went on and the game started and nobody really knew anything. I do believe the producer and the director who were doing the game from San Francisco in the studio, I do believe they thought that something may have sounded strange. I know those two gentlemen, I'm friends with them. And they said, yeah, we, you know, at that point, unbeknownst to me, because we're in Kansas City, the powers that be from NBC were starting to get involved because they were thinking, we don't want this to come out on social media. Okay. So it, we go on. It, it is the third inning. It's the fourth inning. And I, I believe it was the fifth inning, fifth or sixth inning. We go to break. Now, as we all know, each break in baseball is two minutes long. So we went to break. And as we went to break, the producer said to me in my headset, he said, listen, he said, I think you need to, we may need to have you apologize for something. You know what, what, and they said, well, it sounded like you may have said the N word in the pregame show. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I really didn't. Dallas was kind of looking at me like, what's, what's going on? And I said, I, I said, I'm not sure. Now remember, this is a two minute break, Damon. Okay. So the clock is ticking down. And my response back to the people in the studio, including the NBC higher ups who were on the phone with the producer and the director. I said, listen, I said, you got to show it to me. I said, show me what I'll apologize, but I can't do it unless I see the video of what I'm apologizing for. They said, no. And then the, the tough one for me, Damon was there was 20 seconds left in the break. And the bosses at NBC said, Glenn, we, you need to put him on camera. You need to put Glenn on camera. And now that's 20 seconds left. So I said, you guys cannot put me on camera. I said, I don't even know what I'm apologizing for. 
and they said, no, it, it'll look better, you know, if, if you do that. And within five seconds of that, I was on camera apologizing uh, for something I hadn't seen yet. I didn't say I hadn't done it because obviously something was wrong and I had made a mistake. I just hadn't seen it and I would have liked to have seen it. All of this happens very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now it's several hours after the game. The aftermath is brewing. Yeah. You, you know, you know, I mean, yes. you've already gotten the, so what'd you do at work today, honey, phone call, and probably yeah. had a very difficult conversation <laughs> with, uh, with yeah. your family, with your brother, with your brothers who have yeah. both worked in baseball broadcasting forever. So you have a sure. lot of people to talk to about this. Yeah. Who at the A's did you talk to about this? Who called you? Was it Dave Cavill? Was it anyone? Yeah. Who from the A's called well. you? Yeah, I mean, listen, when I made a phone call to Dave Cavill, who's obviously the president of the A's, I, I wanted to talk to him and apologize, and I did. He was not happy. You know, he, he told me that. He said he was very disappointed in me. I understood. The next morning, I had requested from the A's media relations department, I wanted to talk to uh, a couple of the coaches, uh, a couple of the black coaches, Eric Martins. And, and you know, so I, I wanted to get to those guys they had asked Eric and Marcus, the other coach, Glenn wants to talk to you. And they said, well, we're, we're not quite, we're not really ready to talk to him yet, which I, I understand. I did track down Tony Kemp in the lobby and I was scuffling. I'm not going to lie. This was a bad morning and I was emotional. And I, I, I told him what happened and I, I said, it was accidental. I said, I'm sorry. And he was understanding. And we talked for maybe three to four minutes. And, and that's when NBC started the investigation, which went on for a couple of weeks. I was part of that. I did an interview. But outside of that, I really was sort of left out, not really knowing what was going on. Nobody really contacted me. Victory has a thousand fathers. Defeat is an orphan. <laughs> right? I mean, isn't that yeah. the truth, though? Like, as soon as things go wrong, man, it's you, you find out who really cared in the first place. You know, like, hey, man, something well, awful just happened. Are you all right, though? I Like, this is professionally weird, but I know you personally. How are you doing? That that call is appreciated, and it's disappointing that it came from, you know, no one yeah. above you. I'm sure it came from an awful lot of your support system. The one thing I want to say, too, about, you know, what happened with me, and th this is something that I've always – it's always disappointed. It's my own thing to deal with, but I, I, this bothered me a lot, and it still does, is that from the night that I made the mistake in Kansas City, I called Dave Cavill, as I told you before. From that night to right now, as I sit here and speak with you, not one of my bosses at the Ace has ever contacted me. And I had I had good relationships with these people, and I I did what they wanted me to do, and I really loved working there, and I really did have good relationships with these people. That will always bother me a little bit because I made a mistake, and you know, just a phone call and say, hey, you know what? We're sorry what happened. This is, you know, we needed to make this move. Okay, I get it. You talk to your brother for the first time. What what's what's Dwayne say about this whole thing? He knows that a mistake was made, but he also knows that it was not done on purpose. And some people could have made this situation maybe better. And I that's think not taking away from the mistake that I made at all. But he's he's protective and, and he thinks that it should have been handled much, much, much better. Well, so did I. And that was my initial reaction. And it remains my reaction. And I am really happy to just see you again, man. You Do know you think... You're going to call another Major League Baseball game in your life. <laughs> oh, man. I, I tell you what, Damon, I really hope so. I, I miss I missed uh, calling games. I do. I, I, I'm not going to deny it. Um, I, I hope that I do. I hope somebody's willing to, to, to you know, partner up with me and do this. I hope an organization is open to it. I think I'm a good announcer, but I, I don't know. You know, it, it's a tough world right now. It's not always a forgiving world, and I understand all that. But I've been in sports for you know over 30 years, and I very much would like to broadcast again. If not, I'll do something else in sports. There's a lot of things to do out there, and uh, 
stay in the sports world because it's a lot of fun and I've enjoyed it. You again, you, you had the last great run of A's baseball and then you watched it sort of deteriorate into the unfunded, <laughs> you know, complete, I don't want to say yeah. flop sweat because even if you're a bad minor leaguer who makes a major league team, you're still a very good baseball player. Yeah. But they were basically sending a JV professional team to play professional baseball and they've been doing that without a payroll and with an owner that I think will go down as the most despised owner, certainly in the history of Bay Area sports, among the most despised owners in, in Major League history. Uh, John Fisher was bad for business at the end there, Glenn, no doubt. You know, I and, and in those years after, you know, when the Chapman gets traded, also gets traded, and you can kind of see, wait a minute, what's going on, right? We're that close, right? And I never fully wanted to believe that this was part of some master plan. I really didn't. As you saw it happen, and then you see it again the next year. And, 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 and it, you just weren't quite sure what the heck was going on. And it just didn't smell right. You know, I, I'm, I left. I'm gone. And, and then it, it allows you to step back and look, I think, maybe a little clearer. Um, because you don't feel an obligation to back what that front office is doing for you. The reason why I wanted to talk to you is because broadcasters create very, very special connections with fans. Mm -hmm. And that is always on display when we talk about baseball broadcasters and Glenn, your voice is part of the tapestry of the Oakland days mm -hmm. for the better part of 20 years. Certainly the last great part of the A's as a great baseball team were stories that you were able to tell as the lead play-by-play -play broadcaster on TV for all those years. And I thought it criminal that you not be involved in any way to the point where it felt like they were editing you out of highlights <laughs> in, you know, the final game montages of all of this, because you you know, baseball, baseball's dotted with, to tell this full story, we look at the good and the bad. And I think that your good should have been considered in this long, slow goodbye. And it's a shame that it wasn't because you're a huge part of the story. I, I know in my heart, I was part of some, some pretty cool stuff. I am really happy to just see you again, man. You All look right. great. Your hair is still fantastic. Yes, OB. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, there's not as much, but you know, you still got to spend some time on it. Still got it. Glenn, David, thank you. I appreciate you coming on and uh, hopefully I get to do it again with you sometime. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Glenn. Thanks buddy. Thanks for watching. Tune into the Damon Bruce Show live on YouTube every weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific.